Team Deathmatch. Rangers lead the way. I was watching a video by Bob Labla, a good old Texan American, and he was basically talking, well, he started off talking about, if you didn't see it, Xbox Live tweeted out this picture. It was like a new violation of uh, camping is now a violation. You can't camp anymore, otherwise you're going to be, you know, whatever. It didn't say you were going to be banned. It just, I, it was, it was kind of goofy. I think it was just like an inside joke, but I don't think there's any possible way that they could enforce that. But anyway, he rolled that into... Uh, if camping is bad for the Call of Duty series, which a lot of us agree that it is, it slows down the game. It makes an arcade shooter that is an arcade shooter, not a military simulator. Uh, it, it slows it down. And if, and if it's bad for the series, whose fault is it? Is it just the players or is it the developers? And I don't think that's such a simple question. Uh, Bob basically talked about he thinks it's the developers. You know, they gave the, the campers IEDs. They gave them target finders, they gave them motion sensors, you know, bouncing betty, stuff like that, shock charges, and I agree with that, but I also, I think some blame has to come on to the player, and Bob knows that, Bob and I rarely agree on anything, besides that, you know, steak is good and guns and all that good stuff, but uh, and I'm not here to disagree with Bob, I think he's he's right in those, those things, I guess I'm here more to... I don't know, broaden your mindset and kind of think of it both ways. So I'm not really judging for one side or the other, more just providing a little bit more insight, I guess. And one of the first things he talked about was IEDs. And he basically said, developers give campers IEDs. And even though I agree that campers can use IEDs, rushers can also use IEDs. And when they're having their little development meetings or creative strategist meetings, maybe somebody said, we should put an IED in the game, and both campers, defensive players, whatever, and rushers can use it. Just like a camper, you know, puts it at a doorway and then sits and aims at a doorway like a dork, a rusher, like uh, Sandy Ravage, for example, he uses IEDs, and he will throw the IED in classic camping spots, like in a room or in a window or on a roof, and he knows that when the camper goes back there, maybe he got killed in a spot, He'll throw the ID in a spot next time. And when the camper goes to camp there, boom, he blows up. Anti-camper tool. So the ID isn't just for campers. It can be used by rushers too. Uh, the target finder. When people think of the target finder, they think of campers using a target finder to sit in a corner or sit in a window or whatever and pick people off as they run by. Well, Treyarch may have looked at it as you can use the target finder to see campers with a big red box around them that you may not have been able to see without the target finder. So they may have looked at the target finder as an anti-camping tool. You know, same thing with the tracker site. Same thing with, you know, things that allow, like the heartbeat sensor. You know, getting some guy sitting in a corner. The problem is that it seems like the developers don't think both ways. Or they may think both ways, but they don't think of who is really going to use the tool that they are providing. Uh, I mean, I've been killed by campers using RPGs. They will sit in a corner, they will wait, wait for you to run by, and they will shoot an RPG into your feet or whatever and kill you. And of course, I have an entire series dedicated on providing some justice to camping dorks sitting in corners. And I blow them up in the hope that it either makes them leave the lobby... Or it makes them move their ass. So, I mean, even an RPG, which on my channel is a complete anti-camping tool, can be used to camp. So, I guess my point is, it's not always the developer's fault. They may put something in the game that they entirely mean to be used for good, and it gets used the wrong way. 
I have Modern Warfare 2 gameplay in the background. Maybe one of the biggest exploits in Call of Duty history in one-man army danger close grenade launchers. When they thought of one-man army, they must have thought, well, this could be great. You could change your kit based on what situation you're in at the time. And they may never have even contemplated the fact that people would use that to have unlimited explosives combined with danger close. I mean, if, if they would have, you know, Infinity Ward fell apart at about the middle of Modern Warfare 2, so this game got almost no post-game support. If they would have patched One Man Army, Modern Warfare 2, I believe, may still be the most played Call of Duty today. I mean, there's obviously other issues with the game, but, I mean, that's the biggest thing. And even One Man Army, maybe the most powerful kit and most exploited kit in Call of Duty history, I mean, that may not have been something to develop, and, and maybe you'll say, well, that's still the developer's fault. They have to think of every angle, and I completely agree, but I'm not saying it. I'm just saying it's not all on the developers. I mean, they have to account for hundreds of millions of people playing their game in different ways, and man, that's that's got to be a lot of stress, but what do you guys think? Is it on the developers? Is it on the camper, the player? Is it on the tools that they're provided, or are they just going to camp regardless? I think Ghost proved that it's not really kill streaks. The kill streaks are terrible, and people still camp. I, just, I, I hope that the next game brings back Ghost, like in Black Ops 2, where you have to be moving. I thought that was brilliant. I think Infinity War is stupid for not using it, but let me know what you guys think. As always, thanks for watching. Later. Later.